Welcome to Geo Interesting, presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. For today's podcast, we sat down with Pentagon Press Secretary Peter Cook to talk about his role as the spokesman for the Department of Defense. Cook was previously a correspondent for Bloomberg TV, where he covered Congress, the White House, the U.S. Treasury, and the Federal Reserve. Now, for the Department of Defense, he conducts daily press conferences and frequently uses information from NGA to keep the public informed. I wanted to start by talking a little bit about your background. So you started in journalism and news media, so kind of on the other side of the camera. What was it like making that transition, and how did you transition from being a member of the media to now being the spokesperson for the Department of Defense telling the stories from the inside? Uh, it was uh, an unusual transition. I didn't necessarily expect to be doing the job that I'm doing. I loved my career in journalism, about 25 years in journalism. Started as a, a local news guy, uh, various parts of the country um, before I came to Washington, was covering Washington for, for Bloomberg Television. And like I said, I did not expect to be become a spokesman. It's, it's a significant transition. Uh, it's not an easy choice to make. I thought about it long and hard uh, because I did enjoy my job in, in journalism so much. But I think it's uh, uh, what's been interesting to me the most is how my journalism skills serve me in this job. And that is I understand very much what reporters are doing why they're doing it, the importance of their job, the questions they're asking. I, I come up with the list of questions myself where I go into a briefing. These are the questions I would ask myself if I was uh, out there in the, in the audience. So I think my background as a journalist certainly prepares me, and I have a pretty high threshold, high tolerance uh, for, again, reporters pressing me for information because I would have been doing uh, just the same thing. I also have a pretty good understanding of when maybe reporters have crossed the line because I know what that line is pretty well. What would you say is the most surprising thing about the transition or about your new role? Most surprising thing, uh, gosh, there are a lot of meetings in the Pentagon. Uh, just the, the sheer volume uh, in the Pentagon. I thought I had a pretty keen appreciation for the incoming flow of information, the need to respond to events around the, the world. Uh, and I still, even if you come in thinking it's one thing, there's more. Um, I am guaranteed, as soon as an issue lands in my lap, a crisis somewhere in the world, um, that's my cue that there are going to be three more that are even bigger within about an hour. And it happens all the time. Got to juggle a lot of things. Uh, got a great team at the Pentagon that helps me handle uh, these issues. And a great team around the world, for that matter, of public affairs officers who, who help distribute this information. Doesn't all fall to me, but there is a steady flow of information. Can you walk us through a day in the life? What's a typical day like for you? Uh, it is, it's hard, but I try in the morning uh, to at least see my, I have, I have two boys. Uh, I try and see them in the morning before I head off uh, to the office. Uh, but I, I arrive uh, a little after seven o'clock and uh, one of the first things I do is I get uh, an intelligence briefing from very capable people at NGA, which I uh, very much appreciate. And, uh, uh, I, after that, we have a morning meeting in the secretary's office, uh, sort of uh, senior leaders, uh, we call it the stand-up meeting, where we walk through issues that might be present that day, and then I'm off to the races at that point. Uh, I generally, if the secretary has a high-profile meeting on a topic of some consequence that could have, of course, press interests, uh, I'm generally at those meetings. If he goes to Capitol Hill, I'll travel with him. If we travel somewhere, I go wherever the secretary goes. So I, my schedule closely matches his. And, of course, on days when I have a briefing, and I don't have a briefing every day, um, but on days that I do, I, I try and have a session with my uh, team to try and figure out what's going on in the world, uh, prepare for that. What are the questions likely to be asked? How are we responding? Um, I have that session, so I'll have a briefing in the afternoon, and then... It's more meetings in the afternoon. At some point uh, throughout the course of the day, I've got reporters, of course, coming into my office all the time, engaging with me, asking questions. One of the strengths of the Pentagon is that the press corps is allowed to freely roam the building, and they're able to walk right into my office uh, if the door is open. It's not always open. Thanks. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about risk-taking and innovation. And here at NGA, our employees have been um, encouraged to take calculated risks to help us come up with new ways of doing things or better ways to serve our customers. So as one of our biggest customers, how do you feel about risk taking and how it could affect innovation? Well, uh, as the 
uh, someone who works for a Secretary of Defense who tells us every day to think outside our five-sided box, uh, these are things that Ash Carter's uh, very much in favor of. It's all we talk about is the innovation uh, agenda that he has, uh, the willingness to take risks. We just uh, launched a program where we invited hackers to hack the Pentagon. Uh, that is, I can tell you, the first time that idea came up, uh, there were a lot of people saying, what are you talking about? Uh, the end result of this, and uh, there's some really great people at our Defense Digital Service who pushed this idea, got it through, quite honestly, a lot of people trying to stand in the way, was a program that allowed white hat hackers to come in, identify vulnerabilities in our systems, um, super successful, very uh, cost efficient, uh, first ever in the federal government, uh, and now other federal agencies are quite confident are going to follow the DOD's lead. Great. Um, another thing we talk about a lot, and we've talked about it today earlier, um, is transparency and the importance of transparency. And obviously that's a huge part of your job, you know, explaining to the public what the, the Pentagon is doing. Um, but here at NGA we talk about geospatial intelligence and how it really lends itself to being transparent and to helping tell a story. Um, do you find that imagery and maps are an effective tool for you in helping to convey information or understand a situation better? Oh my gosh, I, I came from the TV world. The, the first lesson in television, show, don't tell. Uh, and images in this day and age, uh, if I show my son uh, something written on paper, uh, maybe he'll look at it. If I show my son something written on paper with a picture attached to it, he absolutely will look at it. Pictures matter. Uh, our brains need, crave uh, images to try and attach that to, to words to explain things and certainly the images that you all put together absolutely tell a story and they're vitally important. We don't do a good enough job at the Department of Defense of utilizing the images we have in an effective way and a lot of that again is just tradition, obviously the classification issues, some things we can't show but to the extent we can uh, one of the things I've tried to do is, is push the system to allow us to, to show more images that help tell the story, help explain things to the American public, because ultimately that's, that's what my job's all about. What else can we do to help improve our storytelling or improve transparency? Um, to always ask the question, why aren't we releasing this? Push the envelope. I had a conversation with uh, some, some foreign uh, military public affairs officers who came on a tour of the Pentagon the other day and, and challenged them when they go back to their countries. Uh, how would you approach some of these issues? Are you pushing the envelope? I think we have a responsibility to try and ask the question, why aren't we releasing this? And many times there's a perfectly plausible good answer why we're not going to release certain images. But if there isn't a good answer, then we need to, to push it and we need to, to try and, and again, use every tool we have to try and tell the American people, the taxpayer, what it is we're doing with their money and what we're doing on behalf of the United States. Great. That's all I had. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I really enjoyed my, uh, my day here. I'd like to come back because you guys have cool stuff. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. You bet. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with us and taking the time to come down at all. Geo-Interesting is presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's Office of Corporate Communication. For more information on NGA, visit www.nga.mil. Like us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, and never miss an episode of Geo-Interesting by subscribing on iTunes and SoundCloud. Thanks for listening.